Hi, welcome everyone. My name's Brett Little and uh, welcome to the Lead Accredited Professional or Lead AP Homes um, training. Uh, just real quick, this training is being brought to you by the Green Home Institute. The Green Home Institute is a nonprofit. We've been around now for over 20 years. And our mission is to empower people to make healthier and more sustainable choices in the renovation and construction of the places we live. Um, and also uh, we are, um, yeah, like I said, a, a nonprofit organization who's been a lead for homes provider, one of the original ones since 2005. Um, just real quick to hopefully you've all our lead green associates and you've been through this. If not, again, there is um, both an in-person uh, and now since the pandemic online option to take your AP credential. Um, and so make sure that you follow the instructions there on the USGBC handouts and reach out to USGBC if you're having any issues with taking that training. Um, you can do both at the same time if you haven't done it, uh, Green Associates and AP, but that is a lot of questions you need to cram all at once. So it can certainly be challenging though it, it is more affordable. Um, if you're looking for some best practices and study tips, one of the best ways, in my opinion, to study for the Lead AP Homes is to become um, or is to take the GBES uh, training online. Uh, it's a practice quiz that you can take over and over again for 90 days. And I recommend getting a passing rate um, of at least 90 percent. And then when you feel really good, schedule your exam from there. So that's a great opportunity to take that. And if you're a member of Green, um, Green Home Institute, you can get instant access to that training right away. All right, so let's real quick go over uh, an overview of the program, just some of the, the basic outlines. And we're gonna have little breaks uh, as far as for Q&A throughout the session uh, as we switch from one section to the next. And so um, please you know, don't hesitate to ask any questions during that time. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, and in fact, you know, feel free to drop your questions in right away uh, so you don't forget it. Just put it right in there and then I'll see it as we get to each next section. You won't be bothering me. Um, just I just don't want you to, to forget your question. So uh, here we go. Um, so basically the way that Elite for Homes uh, project works is that uh, ideally the project team does some kind of outreach to the verification team. Um, and then at that point, the Green Raider um, comes in, they have the project design and they start performing on-site verification services and start assembling the documentation in partnership, ideally with the AP Homes. And then the lead uh, for homes provider helps perform quality assurance on a certain amount of projects on-site verifying the work that the Green Raider did uh, to make sure it's done correctly and then hands off the certification submission on all projects to GBCI. Um, and then at that point, GBCI will review it, make sure everything's good and then certify the project. Um, so basically here's a breakdown of the team. Uh, on one end you have on the bottom there, the design uh, construction team, who in this case, that's where the AP homes resides. Somebody on that team, maybe the architect, maybe the builder, Maybe a third-party consultant um, could, uh, you know, could be anyone involved on the team, but they're part of the design and construction team. They're not part of the verification team. That's important to know. But the verification team has the lead for homes provider and the lead green raider. And then, of course, there's GBCI um, involved in all of this too. Um, so again, just another breakdown of what each section does. Uh, first, there's the USGBC. They inform and educate the builders, maintain the standard, um, that's USGBC and GBCI. Uh, and so USGBC is more on the educational side and standard maintenance, and GBCI is more on the uh, training of the raters and the APs, uh, and then certifying the actual projects and maintaining that database. That's kind of the differences between the two organizations there. Um, and then the provider quality assurance team, at least in the US and Canada, uh, these different entities are required. They provide technical support around the lead green raider training um, for training and for the raiders. 
Uh, they uh, help coordinate quality management throughout the construction project. They submit final certification to GBCI um, and help you know, with the reviews of the final certification. And then uh, the design and construction team are obviously the ones ultimately in charge. They're, they're driving the design goals and strategies. They're designing it, they're building the project. And it's ultimately up to them to notify the raters uh, when documentation is needed. So if you're serving as an AP Homes on a project, that will probably be your job to make sure the raters are uh, uh, you know, showing up on site when is necessary for them to be doing their audits and testing work. Here's sort of how a project goes. And we're gonna kind of go through one of these at a really high level uh, visually. Again, you have that early planning stage, you're contracting with a lead green raider. Um, then when you feel good, you start, you register the project, go through the design, go through the preliminary rating, complete a full plan review. Um, any other kind of pre-reviews that might need to happen, such as uh, energy modeling and uh, ventilation calculations on larger projects. Uh, go through that construction phase. There's a pre-drywall inspection. There's a final inspection. And then go through the certification package submittal, um, first from the Green Raider, first to the Green Raider, then to GBCI, or then to the homes provider, then to GBCI. Um, and then, you know, put together a case study, put together uh, a reflection, lesson learned, and, you know, on to the, uh, on to the next one. Here's a, a snapshot of what is needed on single family homes for submission. We have, in this case, an Excel workbook instead of lead online, uh, photo, photos of the site, floor plans, elevation, ventilation calculations on multifamily, energy reports, energy star reports, uh, site plans, especially if you're taking water credits and conflict of interest, if any of those may be involved in the project. Same kind of deal here on the mid-rise program. Again, the mid-rise has its own uh, uh, work or not its own workbook, but its own uh, variation of the program. Here, you're gonna have um, ventilation calculations and energy models that have been pre-approved from GBCI, ideally in the design stage, as well as um, some commissioning reports or Energy Star certificates. Otherwise, pretty much everything is the same from the submission standpoint on mid-rise projects. And you might be saying, what is a mid-rise project? Well, um, so basically LEED can certify uh, any types of buildings um, as far as LEED, for home, LEED can anyway. And where Homes goes plays into it, um, well, one thing you'll have to know is that for the, for the sake of the test you're gonna take, you kind of got to forget what's true and think about what I'm saying here. And then once you are done with the test, because I don't think they've updated it, you, you can realize that Lead for Homes really can actually certify any height um, building. I mean, we have projects up to 15, I believe up to 40 stories that are mostly residential that are going Lead for Homes. But for the sake of the uh, quiz, and the exam you'll be taking, you won't want to forget that. And remember that really um, four to six stories is sort of your mid-rise level for the sake of the uh, exam when you go to take it. And then low-rise is single family um, or multifamily one to three stories. And then we've got single family production. So you've got uh, either single family attached townhomes or larger projects. And then you've got uh, gut rehabs as well that can be done. And then for the most part, again, for the sake of the for the sake of the exam, additions or models can't be done. Though under the new version of Lead V4.1, there are a lot more exceptions for projects that aren't doing full gut rehabs. But for the sake of the, like I said, for the exam you're going to take, that may not be the um, case. Um, so let me refresh this here. Real quick, I just had a little bit of a issue with some uh, of the next slide, but uh, real quick, I'm going to just basically open it up for questions. And before we get to those questions, I want to throw a question your way, um, one that might be similar to one that you might find on the exam. I can't say for sure that it is, um, but hopefully you can all see that. And Lauren, let me know if they can't. Um, but the question is the lead green raider is on what the design team, the build team, HVAC team, or verification team, which, uh, team is the green raider on? Hmm. 
We've got one for the verification team. All right, well, um, yeah, so uh, the design, build, and HVAC team are all the team involved in the construction of the project. They all have a stake in the project, whereas the verification team has no stake in the project other than a goal to see that it be certified lead. That's their stake in the project. So the Green Raider is only ever on the verification team and cannot serve in design, um, build, or HVAC or anything else, uh, can't sell product to the team, uh, you name it. So before we move on to the next section, any questions overall on this one? Otherwise, we can go ahead and move on. And if you're thinking, hey, I did have a question and we've moved on, don't worry, I can, I can get back to it in a little bit too. All right. <laughs> So let's talk about just some quick overviews of a lead from sort of start to finish as far as the construction process goes. You know, first um, you're showing up on site to be uh, reviewing the um, stormwater pollution prevention controls being in place. So that's the netting, making sure that the stormwater during construction isn't getting into the site um, and potentially doing any damage to the storm system or overfilling it. Um, then during that same time, the Green Raider uh, might be doing a slab inspection and verifying uh, underneath the slab um, insulation, uh, might be verifying um, radon protection, water management systems. And then the framing starts going up. And especially if there's advanced framing going on, um, uh, like such as California corners or other variations of advanced framing, which we'll get into, uh, the Raider might be doing a framing visit. Um, and in, that usually uh, corresponds with an air sealing visit as well, if there's a lot of concern about air sealing on um, the project. Um, and then from there uh, comes the, uh, the true pre-drywall phase. And so during this, they're doing what we call an insulation installation inspection, the HERS Raider, uh, Energy Raider is obviously there reviewing how well the insulation was installed and flagging any kind of issues if they see it. And at that time too, they might be, they'd be reviewing the ducts system and potentially even doing duct blaster testing just to make sure that uh, the duct system uh, isn't too leaky. Something you wanna find out during this stage uh, rather than at the end. Um, and then after that, there's going to be um, the energy rating that gets done, start putting together uh, how the home is scoring as far as either ASHRAE 90.1 for mid-rise or HERS, the lead energy budget for low-rise and single family. Um, and then during that final construction phase, blower door testing is happening to see how tight the unit is. There's ventilation testing to make sure there's proper ventilation happening in the unit. Um, and there's, again, potentially duct blaster testing occurring at the end of the project as well, just to make sure everything was done right. Uh, the Raider is gathering up details on all the HVAC equipment, um, gathering up details um, on uh, what was installed as far as compliance with green features like low emitting or other environmental features. Again, looking at window details, looking at um, carbon monoxide detectors, and they're just making sure all those items are in place. And then finally, uh, if the project is doing a landscape um, submission, sometimes landscape may occur very long after the uh, final walkthrough of the house. And so they would be coming back to do that final landscape review and inspection. Um, all the credits can be found in the lead credit library. And this is something if you're doing a lead project, you want to make sure you bookmark. And I'm, I'm posting a link to it in the chat as well. Um, but this is specific to V4 multifamily, but it, you have to go into the rating system and make sure you're using the uh, correct rating system um, so that you're, yeah, you have the appropriate one um, 
for the for the certification. And if you're not familiar with lead credits, here they are, and we're going to be going through all of these throughout our session today and tomorrow. Uh, so sustainable sites, uh, location and linkages, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, the integrative process, which we typically tie in with the bottom one, uh, innovation and design, they kind of go together really well. Uh, materials and resources and indoor environmental quality. So we're going to be going through each of these sections and we're going to be kind of blitzing through them at lightning speed to go over their prereqs and their credits on like a really high level because you'll need to know some of these, um, you know, for your exam or at least be aware of them. Um, and other things that are important is understanding what's going on on the site and, uh, you know, making sure you know where the setbacks are, what the buildable land is, and then making sure that that is consistent across the plans as far as what you're saying is buildable land versus total site land versus stormwater management um, and versus, uh, you know, whatever else there might be, um, uh, water, uh, water, uh, the, the water plant, um, water plants um, and the um, uh, outdoor water landscape, they all have to be consistent so you're not having different numbers uh, for this. And then of course, LEED has prerequisites. So it's important to know that there are major requirements that need to be hit. And you always wanna make sure you focus on these when you're doing a LEED project because you don't wanna go too far down an energy efficiency or air quality rabbit hole um, until you've made sure you've met all the prerequisites which are covered in all these categories. Mostly all these, not all of them, but most of them all have prerequisites and mandatory minimums that do need to be met. And then as far as lead online goes, um, lead online is something you'll be using only to register the project. You won't be using it to um, get any credits uh, submitted or prerequisites or documentation. None of that will be happening um, on Lead Online. And so again, there's just some examples here of how Lead Online works. There's just some basic details, some information that USGBC wants to collect uh, about the project. But that at that point, you just pay your fees and then you're really done with Lead Online. You can almost think of the Lead for Homes provider as Lead Online in flesh and blood and as a real, um, you know, a real version of that. And usually they all have their ways of documenting items or the Green Raider has their ways of how they want things documented, uh, which could be done multiple different ways um, versus lead online. So we, before we move to the next section and get into any of your question, um, let's hopefully an easy one for you. Lead online is used in homes, but how? Is it to score the project, register the project only, um, is it similar to lead B, D, and C and how that works, or is lead online not used at all? Right, yeah, so uh, registration only. That's the only way you're gonna be using Lead Online for Lead for Homes. So before we move on to the next section, are there any other questions for me? Otherwise we can start getting into the credit categories. <laughs> 